Hey guys, good morning, how you doing? Tyler Gracie with Seaport Real Estate Group and William Pitt Sotheby's. Uh, I have a pleasure of having another guest here this morning, um, Ms. Pamela Gracie. Do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit about where you're from? I'm Pamela Gracie with Gracie Benefit Solutions. Uh, been doing insurance for eight and a half years. Eight and a half, yep. it doesn't seem like that long. It's gone by very quickly. Yeah. So Pamela is actually my mother, if you couldn't <laughs> guess by the, the name. Um, so what I have her here this morning to talk about is um, disability coverage and kind of how that plays a role into um, you know mortgages and, and your, your home really like how do you protect one of your biggest assets um, so that kind of leads into what what do people most you know think most are their their assets I mean typically what, what do you hear when when we're sitting with a client most of the time they, they think their biggest asset is their home which obviously their home is a big asset. Mm -hmm. However, it's not the biggest asset. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of times too, a lot of people think that everything's their asset, but if you don't own it, it's, it's not an asset. Right. Um, it's just a liability. So you're, you're, you know, you're still on the hook for, for some money there. Um, so another thing, what do other people, you know, say? I mean, their car. Sometimes they're cars. And which is clearly a liability. <laughs> Again, you own it, I still think they're, it's a liability, but. Their financial portfolios, things yeah. like that. Which, yeah, and definitely our um, form of asset. But mm -hmm. I think the big key is we're talking about how to cover cover those things because if you can't work, which is what we're going to talk about, Correct. how do you protect yourself from losing those things and and basically having to dip into your you know investments, your savings? I mean, most people don't. Even, what's the percentage? Most people don't even have thousand dollars. Right? What is it like Correct. 60, 65 percent or something like that? Yeah, um, have less people. than a thousand dollars in the bank to cover expenses. Yeah, and I mean, within like 51 percent or something like that of people are going to experience some sort of disability at some point yeah. or other. That keeps one in three people in their lifetime as of now, but I'm sure that's going to continue to change and increase. So is that something that keeps them out permanently, or is that kind no, of a mix between the two? Mix like, of short and long. Yeah. So, where do you really find the most? Um, you know, is it is it pretty much every career like a lot of people think that they don't need disability is it a, a lot of people it's one they don't aren't maybe made it available to them so they're not fully aware of how what it, it really works is and how it really benefits them others because they think they're employed they have workers comp they believe that they are covered under workers comp as far as income right which that is true if that injury or illness occurs on the job however statistically the majority of injuries and health events occur outside of work so without having some form of disability in place, everything that they've worked for, you know, what is the American dream is, you know, working, you your house. getting your home, getting the, the car that you want, having those vacations. However, it's quickly taken away when you don't have that income to keep that um, right. payment going. Right. So in terms of your, your disability coverage is your paycheck protection, which okay. basically covers, you're protecting your biggest asset, which we believe is your, your income and your ability to have you know create an income um, so yeah that's a I think that's a huge thing that a lot of people don't necessarily take into consideration I mean you, you don't work you're not bringing in money what are the expenses that don't stop I mean you well typically if there is an injury or an illness or even maternity that happens right. not only is it that individual typically losing their income the majority of the time it's what's called a dual loss of income Whoever that person is that's taking care of them, taking them back and forth to the doctors, they don't have their income coming in because even if they did have disability, they're not going to get paid taking care of somebody else on disability. So it's basically to, you know, the spouse, whatever, Whoever taking someone to the, yeah. Correct. And then as far as the expenses, you're going to have more expenses when an injury, illness, or maternity because now all the medical bills are coming in, all of the right. time and transportation going back and forth, whether you pay parking at the hospital every time or just the gas, there's a lot more expenses involved. However, your daily living expenses do not stop, so that mortgage still needs to be paid on time. Yep. Your car insurance, your car payments, those are critical. You can't get to the doctors or to work without right. your insurances or and without you can't, your vehicle. You can't, uh, like the medical bills, you can you can make mm -hmm. like payment plans and, and they have to accept it, but 
you can't really do that with you know mortgage company and, and everything. There's so certain things that what we consider to be more of a, what's called a core expense yeah. that you need to make sure are protected. And so when we're sitting with a client, it's learning more about that core because right. exactly you can set up payment plans and and kind of flex, make extra payments, you know, the following month. But student loans are another big one. Yeah. You know, a lot of people forget that student loans you can't get rid of student loans. So even the young individuals who maybe they don't own the home yet, mm -hmm. they still have other expenses that need to be right. taken care of. Right, so that's definitely huge for anyone that's mm -hmm. still, <clears throat> excuse me, in the first time home buying situation or something where even if you're younger, a lot of times, you know, I'm I'm young myself, so a lot of people think, you know, I'm young, I don't I'm I don't get hurt, I'm indestructible, I don't need disability coverage. Well, you take into consideration if I can't work, uh, you're kind of left with what do you do? Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of we just wanted to talk a little bit about today, mm -hmm. you know, how disability really kind of can play a role into. Home, you know, home ownership, and you know, you stand the chance of being, you know, not being able to pay your bills, um, not only all your bills, but just obviously, you know, your mortgage payment, and everything like that. So, um, anything else? I mean, um, basically, you know, if if you are an individual that doesn't have short-term disability. The easiest way to get it is actually through your employer. Right. There, there's mm -hmm. a lot more options available to you uh, as far as you know, even guarantee issue components. Right. So we have clients who maybe would not qualify uh, for disability outside of getting it through their employer. So what I would say is if you're either a small business owner or you're an employee and you do not have disability available, definitely reach out to a voluntary benefit specialist and look at what options you can provide to your employees. The majority of them, you know, there isn't a cost to the business. However, there's more businesses that are actually starting to contribute to um, some of the different benefits they're doing to find contribution. The reason they're doing that is they're being able to see that increase of morale, yeah. reduced um, exposure as far as turnover, which is helping the client and the individual as well. Awesome. Great. So yeah, if you want um, you know, additional information on, we have a sheet actually, right? Mm -hmm. We have a, a, yep. a sheet that kind of covers a little bit more information, some statistics that you don't really notice or, or think too much of. So if you want some additional information, you want to have a consultation with Pam, um, if you are a business owner and you're watching this and you want to you know, kind of explore the options as how this could uh, you know, help your employees and, and your business itself. Again, you want to point out too, for the majority, it doesn't mm -hmm. cost the business owner. Correct. If a business owner wants to allow voluntary benefits, it can be absolutely no cost. The only thing that the employer will do, they provide a payroll slot, they do the deductions, so they and they it. technically and they um, submit the payment. They do not have to pay anything out of pocket to provide the mm -hmm. benefits. However, it would be, again, up to the employer. I usually will do a consultation with the employer, see where we can bring the most value to the employer. So there's a lot of services that we can provide outside of that that kind of bring the whole package together for the client, meaning the employer, as well as being able to protect their employees. Everybody works very hard for that American dream, so we yeah, want to be able to help as many people keep that American dream going forward. We want to cover your ass. Assets. So again, there's going to be a link if you want some additional information, um, want to chat with Pam, get some additional information, uh, click the link below and we're going to provide you with some, some more info. So again, Tyler Gracie with William Pitt Sotheby's Seaport Real Estate Group and Pamela Gracie with Gracie Benefit Solutions. Awesome. Thanks guys. Where's the off?